Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today, we're going to be discussing why some witches and wizards appear to be able to fly. And when I say fly, I mean they're able to project themselves through the air without the use of a traditional flying device, such as a broom. What I want to explore today is how this ability is achieved, who actually flew, and why only a few witches and wizards have been able to achieve it. In the Harry Potter films, we see Death Eaters fly on numerous occasions, the first time being in the Order of the Phoenix. We see them flying again later on in the Half-Blood Prince while attacking various communities. And because we saw them fly right in front of our eyes, it has led many fans to believe that the Death Eaters can in fact fly. However, this is not the case. One important thing to note is that when the Death Eaters fly, they appear to leave some sort of silvery, smoky trail behind them. This is a inconsistent with what we've seen from witches, wizards who can genuinely fly, and b most likely a conscious decision from the filmmakers in an effort to create some sort of added effect. And honing in even further, there don't appear to be any references to Death Eaters flying in the book, only apparating. The air was suddenly full of the swishing of cloaks. Between graves, behind the yew tree, in every shadowy space, wizards were apparating. All of them were hooded and masked, and one by one they moved forwards, slowly, cautiously, as though they could hardly believe their eyes. Voldemort stood in silence, waiting for them. Then one of the Death Eaters fell to his knees, crawled towards Voldemort, and kissed the hem of his black robes. What this means is that filmmakers, in the name of producing interesting visual effects, simply made apparition, or teleportation, look like flying. But just because the Death Eaters couldn't fly, it certainly doesn't mean that no one could. In fact, there are two wizards that come to mind when I think of flying, Lord Voldemort and Severus Snape. And what's this ability called? Why, unsupported flight, of course. And then Harry saw him. Voldemort was flying like smoke on the wind, without broomstick or thestral to hold him, his snake-like face gleaming out of the blackness, his white fingers raising his wand again. J.K. Rowling is reported to have stated that all wizards have the power of flight innately, but that the vast, vast majority need a broom to achieve it. In Voldemort's case, he was so focused and powerful that he was able to channel the power to fly unsupported, harnessing the energy through himself rather than the broom. This rare achievement is the sign of a truly powerful witch or wizard. We also see Severus Snape, aka the only other known flying wizard, fly away from Hogwarts in the Deathly Hallows. He jumped, said Professor McGonagall. You mean he's dead? Harry sprinted to the window. No, he's not dead, said McGonagall. He seems to have learned a few tricks from his master. What this likely means is that every witch or wizard has the innate ability to fly. It's just a matter of becoming powerful, focused enough to channel it. Just like a young wizard learns to fly on a broomstick, witches and wizards will need to work hard if they wish to graduate to unsupported flying. And that's it for this video. If you enjoy the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.